Shall we bow our heads as we pray? Eternal Father, we thank you again at this hour because you are the source of our being. Thanking you again and again for that which you have been to us. You are our creator. You are our sustainers. You are all in all for us. Without you, Heavenly Father, we are nothing. Thank you for the privilege of life. Thank you for your provisions that you have bestowed upon us on daily basis. Thank you for the good health that we enjoy. Blessed be your holy name again this day in the name of Jesus. As you have given us the opportunity to come together to worship you, to celebrate and to praise your holy name, Father, we pray as the time come now for your word to go out. Father, it has been expressed before that your word is wonderful. Your word is beautiful. Your word is powerful. At the entrance of your word again this morning to your people, let it beautify their life. Let it do wonders in their lives. Let it do something powerful in their lives in the name of Jesus. The word of God this morning we meet you at the every point of your knees this day in the name of Jesus. Thank you heavenly father. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Please be seated for a while as I'm using this opportunity again to give glory to God for the opportunity given to me to stand before this great congregation this art to speak to you from the throne of grace and at the same time to bid you a farewell because by the divine permission of the diocesan a letter brought me here two months, seven, two years, seven months ago. And the letter has also been dropped for me that I should leave this place now. And I should resume again to another place of assignment by the grace of God tomorrow. So I'm privileged to have this sermon today as we do have it traditionally for the duty sermon. I was telling my vicar today when he was Faledrita, I said, we don't have Faledrita sermon again in our, in our diocese because you don't know whether you are coming back here again in two years to come. So what I have just come to do today is not to say goodbye, but to say thank you. Because I know that the Lord who has kept us thus far we never abandon us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me welcome the family of our late father, Chief G. A. Oyenola. They have come this day to appreciate God for that which the Lord has done for them in their family in these last 10 years that the Lord has called upon. Let Chief Godwin Adebiso in Allah to himself. Today we remember his good work in our, in our church. I want to say that the Lord will continue to bless their home and the family left behind in the name of Jesus. Papa, during his lifetime, was an active and default member of Bishop Adela Kunhawes Memorial Church from 1971 to October 2010 when the Lord called him to himself. During his lifetime, he was a member of the Christ Youth Followers, CYF. He was passionate about the things of God and served the church in various capacity, including being a member of the audit committee of the parish for 43 years. He was a loving husband to his actual Mrs. Janet Adonla Yenola, Together, they have had children, both biological and adopted ones, all to whom 
they have remained wonderful father to a mentor until it is partial. It is our prayer once again that the Lord will bless the home. The Lord will sustain Mama and the children and the grandchildren and everyone that have any affiliation with Baba's family. It shall be well with you in the name of Jesus. Let me also congratulate our mother's union, the, the women of substance, the women of a uh, noble character, those who cherish the holy matrimony, the uh, mother's union. For this parish under the leadership of my dear sister and Mama Yad, Mrs. Yeah, Mrs. Ebesua, I want to congratulate you for that which the Lord is doing through you and through the mother's union in this parish. It is my prayer that the Lord will continue to bless his people under your guidance that the Lord will continue to keep our mother's union together. The Lord will bless your home. The Lord will bless your marriage. You shall continue to be as a good example to younger ones, even in marriage in the name of Jesus. We want to thank you all, our mamas, for your labor of love. And uh, recently, I am privileged to the work that you are doing. And the secret of it is this. I have one phone that my wife used at certain time that she was using for, for WhatsApp for the Mother's Union and the women uh, of the church. And that WhatsApp is still, the messages that you are sending every day is still coming to that phone. This morning, when I open it, there is no day that is less than 200 and something message every day. You pray for different people, you pray for marriages, you pray for homes, you pray for the, 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 the ministry. It is my prayer that your labor of love will not go unrewarded in the name of Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. In the name of Jesus. Let me as well, because I have said today is the day of thanking people. Also to welcome on behalf of the vicar, I know at the appropriate time he will welcome the uh, uh, guild of stewards from the Lagos Ecclesiastical Province to this parish this morning. We thank you also for your labor of love in the Church of God. It is a prayer that the Lord will continue to sustain you. In every area of your life, the Lord will meet you at the point of your needs. In the name of Jesus, your purpose of being coming here today will be fruitful. In the name of Jesus. Let me now come to the reason for this service this morning. Today is the 51st anniversary of my choir. Let me borrow that word from my vicar because it's the choir of the vicar that I'm the chaplain. So I can also borrow the same word to say my choir. I'm happy today because my going away coincided with the adversary. Let me tell you one secret. When I came into this church two years plus ago, the first service that I had here was seriously something else when the choir sang. The crash landed when they were singing Awanyo. And I was so bad in the spirit that, ah, Bam Church, at this age, the choir singing like this. I told my Fika, who also had the same mind that I had that day. And to the glory of God, he went into it and Today, I am going with a great joy in my heart that it is not the choir that I met two years ago that I am living today. They are better off than what they were two years ago. And I thank God for you, the choir of this great church, for what the Lord has done through you. And I pray for you that as the Lord has 
place you on the pedestal of greatness, you will never come down. I say you will never come down. In the committee of the choir, in the diocese, and even beyond, you will have your place in the name of Jesus. I want to thank my vicar for the support he has given to the choir. Anything about the choir is number one before the vicar. And I want to appreciate that. Please let us continue to do such so that the church of God in our time will continue to move forward. To appreciate the organist, choir master, the organist and the assistant organist, the executive of the choir and the choir committee. I want to thank God for you. I want to say congratulations to you all on this anniversary. This is my prayer for you that many years to come you will celebrate and you will never miss your reward in the name of Jesus. My joy once again is full because of the impact and effort that has been put into the singing of our choir. Today we can say that the BAM Church choir is standing on the pedestals of greatness and they will take that position in the committee of choir in the diocese and beyond. I pray that the, grand, the, the, the grace of God will continue to be multiplied in your life in Jesus' name. Today is a Sunday next before Advent. The last Sunday of the Christian calendar year by the grace of God, next Sunday will be Advent Sunday, which in the Anglican Church and many Orthodox churches is referred to as the beginning of the year. And this season, what we are talking about and sharing with ourselves as Christians, we have called ourselves, remind ourselves as Christians to prepare for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is imminent. The fence around the world today is pointing to the fact that the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is closer than before. The kind of unrest we are witnessing and the unusual response of people to the happenings around us today should not just be a news, but it should prepare us and our mind that the time is at hand. The most challenging event in our generation today now is the prevalence of religious activities in our generation which has given us a serious concern. And that is why the theme of this sermon today is the wages of religious hypocrisy. And the text is from Amos, one of the passages that I just read to us, chapter 5 and verse 21 to 24. People of God, what is happening today in our society, like I've said earlier, is giving a Christendom challenge because of our attitude towards our religious activities. Today, we have a double standard as far as church and Christianity is concerned. Sometimes, what we are inside is different from what we are outside. Sometimes, our meaning in the church is different from our image outside. And this has brought the Christianity today in our generation to some extent ridicule. Because you see a lot of people talking to church Christians anyhow because they feel that Christians are not standing for what they preach and what they talk about. When you talk about hypocrisy, it's a pretense of having a virtuous character, moral or religious belief or principle 
that one does not possess. Living a fake life. Presenting oneself as something that we know we are not. And let me tell you, this is one of the subtle and dangerous sin in our generation. Amos, in the passage I've quoted earlier, warned the people of Israel about their, relig their, their, their hypocrisy, religious hypocrisy that they put on as they claim that they are expecting the day of the Lord. Their understanding and thinking is that when the day of the Lord will come, it's going to be a day that God will bring an end to their sorrow and hardship. But in verse 21, 23, Amos declared the mind of God towards their expectation and told them emphatically that God hates their religious hypocrisy. If you look at that verse 21, I want to read it to you clearly. What God says through prophet Amos to the children of Israel concerning their attitude towards their religious activities. Verse 21 says, I hate and I despise your feast day and I will not smell in your solemn assembly. Though you offer me burnt offering and your meat offering, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offering of your fat beast. Take away thou, take thou away from me the noise of your song, for I will not hear the melody of thy vows. But let judgment run down as water and righteousness as a mighty stream. People of God, the word of God is telling us today that one of the wages of religious hypocrisy is God rejecting us in all essence. When you put up a religious hypocrisy, you are just doing yourself because your voice cannot be heard by God. God is telling us through that passage that he hates false worship which is a religious hypocrisy and which is characterized by the following. The practice of righteousness to be seen by people. You know our generation today the Christians we want people to know what we are doing. You know, when we talk about Anglican Church, a lot of things are unique about us. That because of the hypocrisy, religious hypocrisy of some people that surrounded us, we are jettisoning what God has given to us. Like I said in the morning, I said there is something in a book of common prayer. The problem of the world today is that we have left undone those things that we ought to have done. And the Bible says there is no truth in us. The idea of people celebrating what they are not has become the order of day in our generation as Christian. I pray that the Lord will help us. Hypocrisy gives to be seen by people. The gift to be seen by people. That is hypocrisy. And Jesus in his time condemned the Pharisee not because they don't have the Bible, not because they don't come to the synagogue or the temple, but he said they desire to sit in the front. 
Is that not a problem? You know, I do tell people sometimes when I talk, I say, the CMS, the CMS that we grow to know when they are coming to church, they start sitting from the back. The CMS we grow to know. They sit from the back until maybe the guild of steward now come and say, ah, oh yeah, come from, come from, come from. You do, as an Anglican, in those days, CMS, you can't just enter into the church and you want to come and sit in the front. Because that is what the Bible says. The Bible says you don't even know the person that that place is being reserved for. That is going to be an embarrassment when the owner of that seat comes and you now ask to say, Uncle, Uncle, excuse somebody that wants to sit down here is just coming. Hypocrisy is an attitude of praying to be seen by people, fasting to be seen by people, deserve a honor and respect. And giving a just judgment of other. And also persecuting those who proclaim the truth. And not only that, they believe in themselves. The hypocrites, when they have that attitude of hypocrisy, they believe that they are, nobody is like them. Because of this attitude, God disclosed that he hates everything that comes from hypocrites. They are worship their feast and their offering. I pray for you this morning that your effort will not be in vain. The grace of God will be multiplied upon your life. And I want to pray again that as you are enjoying the grace, as the grace is being multiplied, it will not be in vain in your lives in the name of Jesus. God wants our sincere hearts not that which we put forth as individuals. The heart that you serve God with. That is what God needs. Whatever you are doing, the Bible says, whatever you do with the right hand, don't allow the left hand to do it. But today, we have removed it from our Bible. When you want to give something to somebody now in our generation, you have to come with trumpets. Trumpets must go before you. Blow it so that people will know that you are doing this and that for people. That is hypocrisy. So we need to learn from this today as we go forth into the world so that our generation, we know that we Christians, we are standing for what we believe. Let us do what the Bible says. And I pray for you today as you go on believing God, the hands of the Lord will continually be upon you in the name of Jesus. The question is, when we worship God in the church, we should be more concerned about, not about our image, but about our attitude towards God. Hypocrisy deceives the hypocrites. Damages unbelievers and dishonor God so let us desist from it. And I pray that the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. On this note, let me appreciate God for the times that I've spent before you within this, in this parish in these last two years. On behalf of my wife, Pelumi, Precious, and Efeo Lua, we want to say a very big thank you to you all for the love that you shower upon shower towards us during the time that you have spent in your midst. It is my prayer that the Lord will reward you in the name of Jesus. I cannot thank you people enough because what you did for us in these last two years is enormous. Cannot be counting. But I know that the Lord will reward you mightily in the name of Jesus. I want to sincerely appreciate my vicar. My vicar, vicar. My high deacon. My God, the top. is everything to me. And I want to thank you very, very much. From the bottom of my heart, 
you know, this man is my brother. We are from Ondo State together. And not only that, I am his pastor before he become my organ. You know, I have said this sometimes here when I was preaching that the day I will be going, I might likely talk about him and forget the gospel. That's why I first preached the gospel. He's a man of God. I don't, I don't even have enough word to qualify him. My brother, the Lord will reward you. One thing that I'm missing as I'm leaving him now is that his constant visit to my house every time I will miss it. I told him when I came, I said, I hardly go to Vika's house. But he has changed my mind about that one now. Because whenever I come to the church, I live outside very close to this place. I run to his house. Mama Surulere, Mofe Janwo, Kila Nisileo. Mama Surulere, she will enter into the kitchen, bring whatever. She still owe me Orubo. Yes. God will bless you, sir. I'm happy for working with you. And I enjoy our staying with you. God will continue to bless your ministry. I've prophesied before to you. And I'm still praying about that prophecy. It will come to pass. You have the stuff. You have everything. To be that which the Lord is putting in my mind that you are going to be. And the Lord will take you there. In the name of Jesus. I told him, I said, when he, he, uh, he was brought here, you know, we have our clergy, I'm telling you some of our secrets. We are clergy, we have the way of talking and permutating some things. I told him, I said, I was among those people that sat that day and said, let us look at what he will do within two years. He's a small boy. And I began to be a preacher for him now to go and tell those people. Whenever they are discussing Jimmy, I said, Jimmy is not a small bio. He has everything that he needs to man this church as a vicar. And he can never disappoint God. My brother, continue to do that which you have known to be doing well. God will help you. Mama Yard, I'm very grateful. For the love you shower on us. Every time that I have said, uh, things to do in my house, my children's birthday, even if it is 10 o'clock, my vicar will still come. There was one day it was in my house, they locked the gate here. Till around 11, we were sitting together in my house. Before he came in, they were already locked gate. He has to go and park the vehicle in the school and trek in. That is all that this man has done while we, have, we were together. God will bless you, sir. God will bless you, sir. In the name of Jesus. People of God, we want to beg you, continue to give him that support which you have been given so that the church of God at this time will continue to move forward. God will bless you in the name of Jesus. Let me also thank you, people of God, once again. I cannot be mentioning names. I want to thank my colleague, the Reverend Adedinon and the Reverend Ogumbi and their wives who are jolly friends. We don't have problem with ourselves. We will continue to see and we're going to appreciate ourselves. God will bless your ministry. In the name of Jesus. I want to appreciate all the elders in this church. I was their chaplain. All my mamas and my babas. You are wonderful people of God. God will bless you. Even at your old age, you will continue to bear fruit. In the name of Jesus. The Bible study writing committee, I am indebted to you. When I came here, one thing that I said is that I'm coming here to rest. Because I thought that there was nothing to do much here. 
But when I came to this place, I knew that, yes, this is a place to work. Unless if you just want to destroy your ministry. When I found myself in their midst, writing Bible study, writing committee, I told my vicar yesterday, I said, the first Bible study that I wrote for them, when we came together, they tear it. I was ashamed of myself. They tear the Bible study, they diagonize it and said, ah, they, they can't condemn me, but they just manage me. It was then that I went back to draw board. I said, at ah, this place, not be a yes place. So I have to go and read and prepare for whatever I want to present to them. You have really helped me. I have to make that confession openly. I am going out of this place better than I came here. I thank God for you. And the Lord will bless you mightily in the name of Jesus. I can't continue to mention individual names and family. You people of God, you are wonderful family. There is one slang here. Bam is always bam. You will remain big forever in the name of Jesus. Baba, I want to thank you. That Baba, as old as he is, he troubled me a lot. And it's my archbishop and primate. Pope, uh -huh, it's our Pope. Baba, we send texts involving me in every activities. It doesn't make me to be lazy in this place. Baba, the Lord will continue to bless you. You will finish strong in the name of Jesus. I appreciate the PCC. My word is, like I always said, I want to borrow that word from my vicar. It's the vicar's word in bed. Uh, let me just say that today, vicar, I'm sorry. My word is, God bless you. They are wonderful people of God, cooperative, doing well. It shall be well with you. The office staff, I enjoy you all. Mrs. Dada that has always sent food during the day. Thank you. I will miss you. God will bless you all in the name of Jesus. The medical group, the doctor Oshaw, Mama Kwewe, we are very grateful. You attended to our health care. The Lord will attend to your needs in the name of Jesus. The gift of stewards, God will continue to bless you. You are wonderful people. People that I don't even know that they can carry something because of who we are, they are doing it very well with humility and responsiveness. The Lord will reward you mightily in the name of Jesus. And I want to thank every society and service group in this place. The youth, I want to pray for you that the hands of the Lord will never depart from you in the name of Jesus. People of God, as I'm leaving you today, my desire is that you continue to pray for us. The tax of assignment that has been given to us is enormous. And we need your prayer and support. We need you to help us in your prayers and word of encouragement as many as been doing in this last past week that we have received a letter. God will grant you his support in the name of Jesus. I want to give you this word this morning as I'm leaving you. I extracted it from the word for today. It's a devotional book that has helped me in my ministry. Whenever I face challenges, it's like that book is being written for me. And I read it and I'm being encouraged. I started these three reasons why we should continue to serve God and love him. You know, many of us, we don't know why we need to continue to serve God. We are tired at the particular time. Ah, that church, I am not going there again. This thing happened, I am not doing this again. It was written in that book. Number one reason why you should continue to serve God and love him is that he know your past. Where you are coming from, God knows it. Your mistake in the past is aware of it. 
The sin you have committed is aware of it. And one thing about this is that Jesus Christ does not count those things against you. That you have done it. He has forgiven you. He has wiped it away. And he has made you clean. And let me tell you, he has given you a new beginning. That should give you courage to continue to serve him and love him. Second reason is that because you need a friend, you cannot do it alone. You cannot walk this walk alone. Aye Tawai, Aye Oguni, Aye Koru Rokon. You need somebody that will be consoling you. And Jesus is your best friend. Whatever you are facing today, whatever the challenge is, tell him he will handle it with you. He will never abandon you. Because Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, I know the thought that I have towards you. The thought of good and not evil. That is why I want to tell you that is this same Jesus that holds your future. Whatever you are going to be tomorrow is the one that can make you to be. So that is why you need to serve him. That is why you need to love him. So that all these things that he has planned for you will come to fulfillment in your life. Once again, we want to say thank you. It's difficult for us to say goodbye. That we have to say it. Goodbye. God bless you all. And so, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the grace and privilege given to us to serve in this great church at this time. Father, we pray for your children. In blessing, the Lord will bless you. In prosper, the Lord will prosper you. You have fed us in this parish. You will never go hungry. You have given us water for comfort. The Lord will comfort you. You have given us shelter to cover our head. I pray for you today. Every member of this great church and those who have lived with you. I pray for you that your end will be glorious in the name of Jesus. Your children, they will find favor. Your children, children, they will enjoy favor of God. As I go forth, I live with you. And I say no weapon of enemy from a fortune against you will prosper. In the name of Jesus, it shall be well with you. In the day, it shall be well with you. In the night, it shall be well with you. Everything you lay your hands upon to do, it shall prosper. In the name of Jesus. And so unto God, gracious mercies and his protection, we commit you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And guide you on all your ways. And the blessing of eternal trinity. God the Father. God the Son. And God the Holy Spirit. Be among you. And remain with you. Now and forevermore.